Hi, I'm Greg Price, Vice President of Electric Conduit Construction. We've made this short video to help explain the installation procedures for both ADSS and overlashed fiber optic cables on distribution poles. The typical fiber crew, whether ADSS or overlash, will vary depending on the tasks to be performed during that stage of the operation. For example, a crew makeup while framing out poles or overlashing will typically consist of two-person crew. A crew installing the actual fiber can consist of six to 12 personnel depending on the length and the size of the fiber cable to be installed. It is especially important to ensure that no matter the task to be performed, that all personnel are approved by ComEd and are certified electrically qualified by their local IBEW union. Various hardware components allow us to attach the fiber to the pole, take strain off of the fiber, and route the fiber away from conductors and other utilities. Some parts like bug nuts require work gloves only, or at most, a class zero rubber gloves to install. Care must be exercised when installing preforms. They are long and can potentially extend the lineman's reach into the mad zone. The lashing machine, when fully loaded, can weigh close to 100 pounds. Jeff Larson, Health and Safety Director. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the safety considerations that go into the lashing fiber and the fiber placement procedure. We have an extensive training program. All of our aerial lift operators go through. Um, we put everybody in the company through the, through the training uh, to make sure that they're competent because uh, there are two sets of controls. You know, if, the, if something happens to the operator up top, the groundman has to be able to take over the control, so he has to have an understanding. So we do have everybody trained in, uh, in our bucket truck safety program. All of our equipment uh, is electrically insulated, all of our bucket trucks. Um, they're inspected annually, and then we have the uh, daily inspections that the guys are also conducting, uh, where they're just looking for things like uh, leaking hydraulic oil, uh, any signs of wear and tear that could also cause the equipment to fail. So these guys are filling out daily inspection logs on all of their trucks. Another part of our aerial lift training uh, would involve the fall protection. But we have arc rated fall protection, which gives a level of arc rating protection in the event of an arc flash. Uh, that way we know that our fall protection equipment is not going to go up in flames, so it's fire resistant. Every foreman uh, has, has certified hot gloves on his truck. They're certified every six months. Uh, they're electrically tested and inspected on a daily basis. They perform the pump test to make sure that there's no pinholes or any leaks in them. Obviously that's life-saving equipment that they're using there. 
So to summarize, uh, all of our employees are, are highly trained. Uh, we spend a lot of time on training. Uh, it's, it's a big investment and the company is committed to doing it the right way and doing it safely. So the value of the training, it, it starts with the orientation on, at the new hire. We bring our new hires in, they go through eight hours of training. Uh, we cover basically all the exposures that they could potentially run into on any of our job sites. We go through basic training, which is basic, one of the basic hazards of bucket truck training, into the technical side of it, where we are talking about specific electrical protections and fall protection. Anything that, that they, employees that are gonna be exposed to a, a higher uh, degree of risk when they're working up in the power space or something like that, we spend additional time training those people to make sure that they are competent and able to address and mitigate any hazards that they run into. Last fiber requires a messenger wire or strand for support. Pole framing and hardware attachments are similar for both lashed and ADSS fiber installations. In this photograph, the pole has been framed out for a overlash installation of messenger wire to create a false dead end. On the right, a thimble eye. On the left, a ram's horn which will lead the strand to an anchor and down guy. What you are seeing in this picture is the messenger wire that supports the fiber being wrapped by a preform at a dead end position. We are terminating a down guy to an anchor. The strand must be tied into the system ground at points where a ground wire is run from the system neutral along the pole to ground. This relieves the tension off the strand that supports the fiber. In this picture, you will see the messenger wire that supports the fiber held by a preform to the thimble eye. In this picture, we are setting up a jig for the fiber optic cable installation. The fiber is pulled along the messenger wire to the next pole where it will be swapped to the next span. Using rollers to support the fiber at mid-span until the overlash is complete. Bug nut being installed on the support strand that will secure the lashing wire from the J-lasher when it is pulled. The J-lasher being installed on the support strand in preparation for overlash. All fiber optic cable should be dual lashed. The advantage of lashed fiber is the ease with which additional fiber can be added and the ability to splice into at any point.
He's adjusting the back gate for the size of the package to be lashed. So as he's pulling the lasher, it's dual lashing that fiber up tight to the strand to the next pole. And then that'll be secured with a bug nut at that side as well. As you can see, weather does not have a factor on fiber optic installation. We're digging out to expose an anchor so that we can ground the truck properly. Make sure that all connections are clean thoroughly with a wire brush to ensure a good grounding connection, especially in these snowy conditions. The grounding cable is connected to the anchor and to the truck to create a good ground for while performing operations in the bucket. Depending on the task, in relationship to the MAD zone, certain PPE is mandated, such as arc-rated rubber sleeves and gloves. Whenever there is someone in the bucket working above, there should be a designated spotter. That individual's duties are to spot person in the bucket at all times. Here you will note the installation of a preform on an ADSS fiber optic cable. That's an extension arm that he's installing, a fiberglass extension arm. We'll pull them out away from the riser pole. And he's putting on a, a tangent block, and then the grommet's inside. So right now, you have two two-man crews leapfrogging each other. They're framing out poles and preparing for the installation of the ADSS fiber. The mule tape will be used to pull the fiber through the rollers and the tangents at each pole until tensioning can be done. The mule tape will be used for pulling the fiber cable through all the rollers and through the grommets. ADSS fiber has a non-conductive inner core. This is what supports the fiber. Pole framing and hardware attachment are similar to a lashed fiber installation. The use of preforms for strain relief around direction changes or for down guys to provide the additional pole support require care during installation to avoid the mad zone around energized conductors. For more information on this aspect of the installation, see our safety guide.
you want to be more productive when you're installing the fiber and you don't want to have to keep stopping. So by doing this task, it's making the production on the fiber installation faster. Otherwise, you'd be pulling the fiber, you'd have to stop and get all that drill and that hardware to frame out the pole. It's just a slower movement to get the fiber installed. At this point, poles have been framed and the fiber has been pulled out. It's time to put it into the tangents, tighten them down, and secure and tension the fiber in. Fiber is being tensioned in and the grommets tighten to hold the fiber. The fiber route will continue beyond the tensioning areas. We are figure eighting to continue our route down the line. The fiber install will continue down the aerial route, but we first need to get the other end so that we can continue. That is the reason for the figure eight pile. ADSS fiber can be installed quickly after the poles are framed and the hardware attached. The final step is tensioning the fiber to create the proper sag between each pole. When this is done, the clamps on each pole are tightened and the fiber is installed and ready for service. There are a few things to note about each type of installation. Pre-planning and project management are critical to a successful installation. Drawings generally do not note the voltage, electrical configuration, number of transformers, secondary taps, position of the system neutral, or condition of the poles, and whether all poles are accessible by bucket truck or traditional climbing methods. This information dictates the level of PPE that must be worn and can significantly change the production rate of the installation. Electric conduit construction takes great care in assessing every project for these circumstances. This evaluation is carried out by journeyman linemen with decades of experience. This is an added safety factor because these assessments reveal situations that may require a different approach to install the fiber safely. In this picture, you will find a completed product ADSS fiber installed within the tangent and grommet. All fiber is slacked in in mid-spans. In this picture, a splice point has been established. Note the snowshoes, which we create a slack to be able to have the case come to the ground and get into the splice trailer. In this picture, a change in direction is created on the aerial run, causing the use of preforms to support the strain on the fiber. So whenever the fiber changes direction, you must relieve the strain off the aerial run and the fiber itself. This is done by installing preforms on the ADSS fiber and creating a slack at the pole. We hope this short video has provided you with some insight as to how aerial fiber is installed.